so that's the tragic death of uh, Braveheart's dad yeah, at the hands of the English yeah that's the English that I'm married to ok and we're on the story of the Collinses which is a very English name really and this is the bit that we got to yesterday about the Collinses being on the uh, on the uh, United Nations team take you to that in a minute yeah uh, Mel Gibson is alleged to be a Jew I'm now looking for my perfect woman in my hometown <laughs> ever so difficult yet yeah, to find the perfect woman but I will not give up <laughs> okay this is uh, where we got to in the story about Collinses and remember we started with the inspirational goddess that is Joan with her tits out And that's how you walk if you're a devout Christian like Colin who wants me sectioned in the Catholic Church again yeah with the dentists from Poland all of them want me sectioned now because they're in the team to put down the innocents for the love supreme <laughs> yeah oh, and the Cummingses are in that story about Braveheart it's lovely 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 <laughs> they are perfect <laughs> okay right then so we're on to the Collinses again you remember Joan with the tits out <laughs> yeah and when my Jehovah's come around cleaning the windows I remember the memorable films featuring John Joan Collins on the other side of the windows. <laughs> yeah, every port of entry is covered. Okay, <laughs> right then. So let's get on to the more serious stuff about the Collinses and what they do to the world. Okay, so this is James Foster that we got to yesterday. Worked for U.S. intelligence. Yeah, that's the CIA, the FBI, and all the things that we've told you about which every one of the presidents are the leaders of okay for the United Nations yeah which is dedicated since World War II that all of those world leaders ran yeah I've given up the quest for my perfect woman coming from Canada <laughs> even although they're lovely to look at yeah <laughs> everything that they do in life means that they are the fascist world leaders and that is the Yale, the warmongering university. Okay, such jobs as so this is the Collins people. <laughs> Research assistant, US Senate Atomic Energy Commission, Political Affairs Officer, United Nations Secretariat, 1946 
1949. Can you guess what we were doing at that time? Yeah, we were demonising the commies. Okay. By the way, a large percentage of the officers in the Secretariat area of the United Nations for the first ten years were Jews. Okay. And Collins also worked for the State Department and the Treasury Department. Kaching, Shania. Okay, perhaps maintaining his in intelligence work on the side. So that's where we got to yesterday. Let's keep going down. <laughs> yeah, it cannot get lower than that, surely. <laughs> yeah, and the joke about the Canadian women is in the I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay is that one of the jokes is about you press the flowers and that is the present that uh, Braveheart got from his childhood lover yeah and that is the thistle joke yeah it is <laughs> it is quite a dangerous plant to collect yeah to because to pluck the top off you're gonna get stung yeah like every one of these massive financial services and intel frauds <laughs> you're gonna get stung <laughs> okay the commonses make me feel safe <laughs> right then okay Jim Collins Jim writes books on the occult UFOs mysticism Yuri Geller yet the man that takes the piss as a Freemason about sitting on top of a pole as a magician see no evil speak no evil hear no evil yeah as the masons say all around the world that's why harpo marx pretended that he was deaf and dumb he was not deaf and dumb they're really really clever and all of them end up in the treasury department but the marx name is associated with the commies Okay, John Anderson Collins was a socialist forerunner of what is known as communism. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's why I like the commons so much. Yet yeah, the ordinary common affiliation and the capacity to fearlessly <laughs> take on all of those posh schoolboys on the rugby pitch, they're really good at that too. He attempted several communist social experiments beginning in the 1840s. The importance of how all this connects to the occult and the Illuminati by, can be appreciated by reading Fire in the Minds of Men by James Billington. That's not Billington BHP, the mining fraud that is owned by the Queen in Australia which is also owned by the Queen in <laughs> the palace that she got from the Germans that were from Teviotdale. Okay, John Churton Collins in 1886, okay, so that's BHP Billington, Mark Carter, the head of HR at uh, Otago Polytechnic, yeah, and the boss to my wife after she had worked for the care, who was the head of the institution, yeah, that's BHP Billington that Mark Carter worked for and my son also worked for. Okay, John Churton Collins in 1886 he wrote a book on Voltaire. Oh, we're into revolutionary France. <laughs> yeah, and that is probably after Hillary Clinton's lineage left there for French Canada and all of those floppy women that have come become a terrible letdown for me okay and in 1908 he wrote yet another book on Voltaire as a lecturer who traveled to the US and Germany <laughs> perchance the press always gave him great press coverage he was involved with the occult he was found dead in peculiar circumstances in a ditch yeah you remember what happened to Braveheart's childhood lover at the hands of Longshanks <laughs> who interlocks with Colin Cowdery and all of those people I've told you about. <laughs> Linda Collins and Virginia Collins co-authored the book Levels of Mind in 1984. That's when the world's are due to come to an end with a suspicious plot behind it. 
Monty Collins was State Superintendent of Schools in Georgia. He was a Freemason, a Grand Master of the Georgia Grand Lodge of Odd Fellows. <laughs> Editor of the GA, don't know what that is. Odd Fellows News, and if my source is correct, of Atlanta's Masonic Magazine. Yeah, okay, he was a pastor. <laughs> yeah, like Cosmo Lang in the uh, what, 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 what? Stammering Windsor King joke. Okay. <laughs> Ordained in 1909, Friendship Baptist Church for his lifetime. Paul Valar Os Collins. Okay. And the Jewish thing with Ma Val is the thing about her brother being circumcised, which she occasionally used to drop into the conversations. And they falsified which school he went to, especially after I found out that Lord Boateng went there too. He's a Christian preacher too. <laughs> but he's not in the Collins story, he's in the Aegis Defence Systems story as a Christian preacher with all of the warmongers. Yeah, and he's a massive profiteer at Aegis Defence Systems Limited with Field Marshal Ng and all of the usual suspects. <laughs> Studied art in Paris, did Paul Valorius Collins. Interviewed Italian strongman you might have heard of this one, from Miss Jean Brodie, Benito Mussolini in 1927 for Outlook, the girly magazine, Presbyterian and a Freemason. <laughs> right then, so we're into the swing. <laughs> this is Mussolini. Uh, where are the women that is? Uh, the woman that is the Peron of Argentina visited. Uh, sorry, the Mrs. Simpson that is the woman in the palace in London and then in the silk stockings in Paris for the whole of her very peaceful and love-loving war with the abdicated w w w w Windsor King. Huge fans of Mussolini. She got part of her womb destroyed by his son-in-law and I cannot remember the name oh Chiano like the piano jokes for the Piso family okay so we're in Italy where fascism prevails at the start of the war and then they're allowed to change sides and I used to talk to a man in my hometown who fought at Monte Cassino <laughs> and that's the Monte Python's joke place where they kill the returning troops using Lucky Luciano and the Teamsters from the US with their automatic weapons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and there's another set of pictures and this time it's Miss Jean Brody. <laughs> yeah, she's got massive palsy in the eye. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I believe that she's the one that came to meet me in that conference at Maudlin College, Oxford, which is nearly as cold and frozen <laughs> as uh, my own home is at the moment. Okay, here's the Cruella de Vil Collins. <laughs> yeah, and that is Hillary Clinton, is Hell Arius Clinton. All of them are in the same anti-Christian teams because Christianity is an icon for false religion and Jesus never ever lived Cruella <laughs> and that's the story in black and white with all of those black and white truths of the Dalmatian community okay foreign service officer intelligence first secretary to NATO <laughs> that's the peace loving countries for a laugh 73 to 76 director political officer of personnel of the US State Department 80 to 82 worked in the US Embassy in Rome <laughs> with Moss Mussolini well after the war was a risky place to be okay in various capacities Roman Catholic and given an award by the Pope don't know who the Pope was it could be uh, John Paul II who's the first Jew in the papacy and we dare not think about the connotations of his first born children. 
Ross A. Collins, one of the ex-Illuminati members, remember the names Ross Collins, Ross A. Collins was a high-ranking mason, a lawyer and attorney general, a common position for Satanists. That's the head of law enforcement. That's the devil's advocate joke. Okay? <laughs> uh, and a congressman. Yeah. That's the political joke. Globally, everywhere, all of them are actors that work for the Mafia. <laughs> John Lamont, MSP, totally dedicated to the biggest law firms in the world and his money streams from all of the Ponzi's that I've revealed. And that's why he only talks now on air, on YouTube, to eight-year-old boys. <laughs> okay, the woman that was the friend of Gary Churchill was, uh, was Catherine McKinnell. Uh, Labour Party representative for Newcastle North. Okay, that's Gary Churchill on the board of the Tavistock Institution for Mental Health, profiteering from asthmatics all over the dismembered NHS in Britain. Yeah. Okay. So he was born. This is Ross A. Collins. Yeah. A in Collinsville. <laughs> Missouri in Congress at Washington DC. He was chairman of the military, this is led the Lord Boateng story, in other geographical regions, chair military appropriation committee, a position which the Illuminati control. So do you get the picture? <laughs> do you get the picture of how the money stream drives the whole of the world's morality along? Yeah, do you get it? And that's my letters, all of my letters, to the Attorney Generals in the UK. And their name for a laugh, like that clip that I showed you at the beginning, is Wallace. Lord Wallace of Tankerness. And that would have been Tankerville had I not found out about the Normandy connections that are part of, uh, <laughs> part of Hillary Clinton's criminal transcript. Okay, <laughs> so Ross Collins was famous for advocating mechanised weaponry like Lord Boateng from Hemel Hempstead, yeah, and from the uh, African commissioner. He, he was he was the ambassador for for the Republic of South Africa. He wanted technology to be applied to weaponry. He is credited with bringing the Flying Fortress into being. Many Collinses, who were Masons, for instance the history of the Scottish Rite Masonry. We heard yesterday about the landing on the moon and the Scottish Rite flag being flown on behalf of every American president. Every one of the bastards has been a Freemason. And that is the bastard word that was confirmed to me by Field McConnell because he went to the same school as the bastard President Obama, who's not an American citizen according to Field McConnell. But Phil McConnell promised to make videos with me fortnightly because I was really dangerous to the Freemasons that run the war, what the world with the pastor in his back room and all of the pennies hanging on his wall. <laughs> in Chicago, also titled Oriental Consistory 1856 to 1907 by George Warville. 33 degree lists 12 Collinses as being members of Chicago, the windy city where you get hit on the head by a baseball bat if you're prepared to confront the Mafia. Okay, Oriental Consistory, PP 99 to 100. No Irishman in the story so far. Yeah, that's Michael Collins. And get the fuck out of my country. I cannot do the Irish accent very well. And you should hear Connie Nielsen from Denmark doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing they're ever so talented in stealing and killing all of their fans. Stealing from and killing all of their fans and their electorate and their funders. Yeah, there is no need for tax paying anywhere in the world if the mints and the central banks were to issue the money to their citizens. 
we could all live in a work free society and we could all be fucking poets <laughs> yeah we could all be poets right <laughs> so Varnum Lansing Collins Princeton the warmongering university and run uh, he's a professor and an Episcopalian yeah that's the lovely churches that are beginning to turn their policies around based on last weekend's experiences okay <laughs> I don't know how long that will last Wilkie Collins author of occult fiction kind of fan of his when I was young and mindless Okay, he's the one that writes the th mysterious stories about the woman in white, and that is Queen Victoria, the first not a virgin to be married in virginal white dress. And you know that story inside out now. Okay, the Moonstone, Armadale, the Law and the Lady. Okay, it's the Law Dad what twists the whole thing. Yeah, and even at that stage, they're making jokes about Basel which is the central bank in Switzerland okay the moonstone yeah and the Collinses are the first on the moon or in the pod that landed or circulated the moon I can't remember which of the people that were the last three to be selected from the right stuff cast yeah all of it is a joke about American history yeah the moonshot is a joke the whole thing is a vaudeville for a belly laugh at the killing of all of your taxpayers, your ratepayers and all of those people that are put in the uni uniforms in every one of the great conflicts. Shania Twain. <laughs> I hope that impresses you a little bit. More, okay? In the grip of terror, okay? The Dead's Secret. <laughs> the Moonstone, we've done that one. Fund Love. <laughs> Valley Jane Lees. The Woman in White. <laughs> the Guilty River. Okay. That's Wilkie Collins. William Collins, his British Collins publisher firm, has printed some books in On British Intelligence. MI5, MI6, okay? Thank you for my intelligent people coming forward to talk to me. <laughs> and I hope the rodent issues abate somewhat because of your change in policy and your links to the Melrose School. <laughs> there are some names such as Gould, for instance, that reoccur way out of proportion in Masonic literature. Russell is another name that reoccurs everywhere. That's the first, uh, the first uh, headmaster at Kelso High School when I went there, <laughs> and the first project that I did in the art sector, yeah, where all of these people are commemorated for the whole of world history, yeah. The first project that I did was to make a paper mache. Uh, totem pole and that brings tears to my eyes now yeah that is the joke about the people <laughs> that come to see me from Nenthorn who are part of the massive dynasty that are the McLeods of Sky, and they're also married into the Cooper families <laughs> that brutalized the American Indians all 500 of those nations Okay, so we made a totem pole at Kelso High School. One of the first things I remember about going there. <laughs> it became evident that the Russell family was not a common family, but wielded immense power. That's the Jehovah word. The Jehovah word. <laughs> yeah, and all of it <laughs> makes that original sin look tiny. And on the weekend, I learned that Adam is a criminal too. From the Jehovah's. And that's the one that looks like Bill Clinton. But you must not talk about that. 
Oh, Satan. How is the triple bypass <laughs> fallout, Bill Clinton? Okay, so we've got the Queen of Darkness, the Royal Ips Ipsimus. A little bit of the piezo in there, yeah. The little bit of the hippopotamus piezo jokes. And you've got Grandmothers of Darkness. We talked about that in yesterday's video. That's 13 grades. That's the 13 Mafia families that run the world. And the Grand Druid Council that, since I learned to use company check, has been disappeared at the British end of the pyramid. <laughs> okay, that's the four corners joke that Gordon Bowden and Peter Eyre, those adventurous people that work for Alan Bond in the munitions sector and cover up the crimes of all of the people in Notting Hill. Yeah, and when you look at the man that he looks like, Lord Hollick of Notting Hill, that could well be Gordon Bowden's body double, okay? And they know in that Four Corners joke that Wellesley Wood is the name of the Duke of Wellington that took over the central bank for the Rothschilds with the victory at Waterloo. And that is the ABBA song. Okay? <laughs> and they are forced into the divorce too. Yeah? <laughs> when all is said and done, I'm hoping that the gods will make an intervention. <laughs> Mother. Mother's 11 grade masons. Okay? Supreme master. Servant of the pentacle. Five star general. Yeah, that's the five. <laughs> In Fox News, Sisters of Light, nine grades, nine kings to rule them all. Yeah, the lord of the fucking wedding rings jokes. <laughs> yeah, every marriage is arranged and dismembered. Yeah, and all of it is a huge joke for ABBA because they get paid to be global celebrities. Okay, and they get paid to laugh about everything that happens in World War II when they give up the ghost. Yeah, and that is the launch of the Quisling War, because that is the Prime Minister in that country that just gave up to the Nazis with the Nazis and the man who is <laughs> Jocelyn Hambro is running as the SOE boss. Yeah, with the Nelson characters <laughs> and the whole of world warmongering history is a joke about profiteering. Regular covens, led by priestess, total of all the covens in the US, approximately 150,000 secret societies. Okay, regular male covens led by priests. Okay, the Brotherhood, pure Satanism, the female part of the Brotherhood, pure Satanism. That's two of the four corners. Guardians demonize the Nephilim, place the all levels to enforce. So can you see the little steps up the pyramid? <laughs> and the Sphinx is the lion lying down in front of it. Okay? <laughs> okay, so and here's the Sufis. Yeah, that's one of the Muslim orders now. Yeah. Part of the demonization program, which is the reason that the Rockefellers fund the psychology of religious mind control. Diagram based on the Kishtil order. <laughs> yeah. Grandmaster, peer, head of the monastery. The Piso joke. Okay? The peer group. Do you get it? Yeah? The Russell group, peer group, peer pressure. Get your funding if you lick our arses and you refuse to confront the student theft project, Dr. Ian Fingland. Pilgrim Suffies, okay? Every one of them knows the Piso joke, but not the whole of the story comes out as if all of them are satanic worshippers, and all of that comes into those films that Indiana Jones makes. Yeah. <laughs> all of the stuff, yeah, all of the mind control, all of the trance like states that Tavistock create, and all of the training of the world's fascists, it's the same story. Okay, and it's all run under the Christian cross. <laughs> Associates, recluses, workers, okay? Five Halkas guilds, the city and guilds in London, 
massive crime scene links to the temple bar links to the crown templar and the world's owners <laughs> that, came, that came brought Sufism to Scotland in the Middle Ages when they had an earthquake at Galashiels when Walter Scott and his mates set up yeah, the lodge in Galashiels <laughs> right then and this is Moria Moria is the underground in the Lord of the Rings movie ok <laughs> and that is where me uh, playing the role of Gandalf the man who's prepared to confront it all and rally the little people with the hairy feet yeah <laughs> it's a huge belly laugh for the man who wrote it at Oxford's richest college J.R.R. Tolkien was from Merton like the Duchess of Sutherland is still living in Merton and all of her con colonists have come back now that's Rupert Murdoch yeah, head of News Corp all of the twisted inquests all of the false polis all of the judiciary it's all the same mafia ok and they're going to have to murder me to silence me we've only got six days to go until the final hearing that's the final 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 hearing <laughs> and it's Sheriff Peter Patterson who's better off altogether and now that I know that he lives in Yetham, I understand why they were getting the massive lightning strikes, OK? Organisation of the Safut Sufi order. But I get messages about that man being a socialist too. <laughs> OK? And Gary Churchill, yeah. That's the name of the woman. The socialist from Newcastle is, uh, I've just revealed it, uh, Catherine McKinnell. The Masonic membership numbers on P and Gary Churchill at Tavistock is friends with her as a Labour MP. I don't know if she survived the, cut at the last election. Okay, the Masonic membership numbers 12 to 20 were obtained via Mino Pecarelli, who was a P2 Mason himself. That's the P2 Masons that run the world's banks. Yeah, that is the HSBC and all of the massive banks, and that is where. Uh, Captain Mannering's relatives and John Robertson Wright who lives in Edenham, yeah, in a tiny little village in Edenham. Yeah, they're trillionaires and all of the funds that we see about in the rich list are not anywhere close to those that they have at Canary Wharf, yeah, where they killed the people in the seven seven bombings, yeah, because they missed the train that they needed to be on to do the bombings <laughs> and Cressida Dick did it on behalf of the monarchy and then all of a sudden Prince uh, Wills's brother yeah, the Harry one who's prepared to kill in Argentina if the circumstances are right all of a sudden he's dating a Cressida and the whole lot of them have no integrity they are thieves and mafia members and Cosa Nostra leadership killers Okay, this is what Mino's body and car look like after being shot. That's what they scare you with if you're prepared to confront them. Like I've confronted Miss <laughs> Anne Lawrence, yeah, Princess Anne, who sits next to John Jeffrey, yeah, and the Kelso rugby heroes, yeah, all of them, the whole lot of the sporting events are just covers for what's in the news that week. Okay, prior to the Civil War, the American branch of the Collins family split off under the name of the surname Todd. Yeah, this is my mate who gets the kidney stones. Yeah, and he's the rugby joker <laughs> with Harry Sears. Yeah, the Sears name came into yesterday's story. Todd, and that's the man who's prepared to turn the tiger inside out by grabbing its fucking Royal Dutch shell tail and pulling it inside out yeah all of that lives on generation after generation in my hometown and even the commons are victims of that because they don't understand it yet they're very fightable and I like them <laughs> okay <laughs> presidents Mas Madison and Lincoln were married to Todd's Lincoln's wife Mary Todd was into the occult 
Right then, let's go down. Whether Abraham Lincoln is in heaven or not, I am not. I do not know. Those decisions are God the Almighty's. Yet this man's a realist. <laughs> but from examining the evidence as carefully and honest as possible, Abraham Lincoln was a Rosicrucian, and in fact he was a member of the Order of Lilies Council of Three, along with Pascal, the candle in the Christian joke, Beverly Randolph, and General Ethan Allen Hitchcock. Yeah, you've heard that name before, I think. That's head of the armed military police in Britain who look after the nuclear weapons in the Trident plot in Glasgow, which is nothing to do with politicians, yeah, as the defence mechanism for our country. And I've got all the director numbers, and all of that is cited by Ian Fingland as the evidence that I am unhinged. That is Alf Hitchcock from the Essex Girls community. Yeah, that's a joke that Ian Fingland might understand. Properly speaking, those Todds who are descended from the Collins family should have been covered in this because they are considered by the Illuminati as part of the Collins bloodline. <laughs> J. Todd. Yeah, I've got the respect for you. Yeah, because you're giving me snippets of information occasionally. That could become a flood. Yeah, and if you were to tell me about the surveillance methods and the team that run it, yeah, we could take the world to decency, you and I, <laughs> much quicker. Okay. In summary, the Collins family is one of the top Illuminati families that has managed to remain low-key. It is believed that the Collins family has been kept secret because they wield more power whoa, than the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, or the Anassises. The only way that I came to realise their importance is through a number of people giving inside information, Mr. Todd, and the only reason that the inside information was plausible and was the great amount of research I had done in this area, and yet what has been done is a drop from what can be accomplished. My research shows the family has been connected to witchcraft since they arrived in New England in the 1630s, ten years after the Ping Pilgrim Fathers started ruthlessly to use those muskets. Yeah, that is the man, Christopher Chambers, who's on board, yeah, training them how to kill the Indians. And may well have practiced it centuries prior to that. Okay, that's the Pilgrim Piso <laughs> Pistake. Okay. At least part of the British Collins family are Jewish. We're visiting them. One of the top 13 families. Okay, we're halfway down now. <laughs> the Van Dins has also hidden themselves very well. Oh no, Judy Bowker, this is the bit about my other one true love, yeah? Who's in the hors horsey sector on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, and she is uh, close to the Collins branch that I found. The Van Den family has also hidden themselves very well, but the Collins family is full of tantalising clues, such as one Collins branch that I found in looking at genealogical family group sheets. This was a book, yeah, that's what I do to find out about Hillary Clinton, about the Canadian goddesses, <laughs> Celine Dion, and the links to Madonna, the biggest religious joke of the lot, with the possible exception of the Hand of God and Maradona. Yet yeah, the whole of sport is just a fraud to keep you poor, and all of you swallow it. This was a book that Gerald E. Collins drew up showing the Collins family. Oh, this is important. This is my wife's stories about Teddy Robinson every Christmas, and the relationship to the Bear family. Yeah, that's the bears of the chemistry world, the bears of pharmaceuticals. Yeah, and that will get the gods riled a bit. Okay, and when I discovered that this tune is the tune about the bears converting to the Rothschilds later in the really, really sinister warmongering fund every side, every revolution, yeah, and get the reparations for everything that you've done to the beautiful world that the gods created, this is what results. 
we'll click on it, I hope it works take, take a few seconds, we'll keep going down till we hear the music <laughs> ok oh no ok, there's a picture of it, you might be able to guess <laughs> ok, sung by the usual suspects <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's the uh, the Murrays all over it. Andy Murray, total, total sporting evasion tool. Yet yeah, all of the world's horrible truths covered by people like him, who lives on the fault line, yeah, near Dunblane, where they had the massacre of all those kids. Yeah, and the man who's in charge of that gets to be in charge of the United Nations forget what his name is, he's the one who issued the gun licence ok, Sun by Anne Murray so let's see if we can see it I maybe got the soundtrack off on that Sun by Anne Murray here we go yeah, I think you will be familiar with this when I found it the other day, even before I found the links to these families, yeah, it, it lit up the skies like crazy. God word takes you into Godsden and the Rothschilds properties. Do you get it? That's the bears become the Rothschilds and gadding about like a bear is the joke about the Rothschilds who are not mentioned in any of the Richlitz stories. Ooh, <laughs> it must have stopped already. Do you get it that now? Take me age, every one of the nursery rhymes is a joke about world history, false religion, or the world owners. Okay? And that is the joke about the Wiccan witches, and their <laughs> reformer is a Collins. Yeah? <laughs> Whose name was originally Collins. Two significant Collinses were Sarah Ann Ain Collins and her elder brother. Her eld older brother was a member of the Satanists who called themselves the Hellfire Club. Yet several films on that theme made in Hollywood. He belonged to the Boston Hellfire Club. Yeah, that's the Boston Tea Party joke about revolution and taxing. Yeah, the Hancocks for the tea, which is the fucking Christian cross. And it's all a huge joke for all of them. Okay, the, and that's where the Boston pub is that the psychiatrist and his brother Niall drink in yeah? and that is all of the jokes about Niall is the name of the Niall and it, it, he's related to the Pierce family that are the predecessors of George W. Bush's presidential linea lineage yeah? and that is the Pierces that are the pie joke too and the Pearsons that are the pie joke too that were my PE teacher at Jedburgh out of Jedburgh and into Kelso. Okay? The Hellfire Club has been discussed in previous newsletters. It has been pointed out in the past articles how Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, that's the one with the lightning conductor because he's a mason and the gods would love to get him, but he's quick and he outthinks them by inventing the conductor that got the priest in the Omen family in the Omen movie about devils representatives on earth yeah, being 
the children of the American ambassador and that's the Francis D. Cook joke <laughs> and the joke about the woman in Paris who is the parent of Bill Clinton <laughs> Harriman yeah are you getting all of the evil story now together in your head Sarah Ann Collins born 1730 quite a long time back isn't it <laughs> yeah, but the ma the uh, pilgrims were already in America was deeply attracted to the occult her family was a generational witchcraft satanic family but many of them wanted to abandon the occult or oh, the innocents trying to get out <laughs> like my wife maybe she genuinely wanted to be married in a Christian church with all those circumcision issues around her and all those issues I now understand about the Jewish marriages yeah meaning that you do you conduct your whole life and the warfare that you're appointed to engage in in that marriage to desert the truth yeah and to become someone that works for the government on behalf of the profiteers <sighs> you can buy my sweet red roses yeah got to pick a pocket or two Sarah did not want to marry the man her father tried to sell her to <laughs> she went to Scotland to get to the heart of learning the occult and become a leader in the oldest form of Wicca the elven path other traditional types of Wicca that's the elves on the church roofs it is the, all the jokes about Britney Spears and the elves in the gardens and all the masons yeah, who come from France to watch Scotland play France dressed as the gnomes of fucking Zurich <laughs> yeah <laughs> treading the yellow brick road and all of them think they're ever so clever and it leads to the killing of all of the war dead other traditional types of Wicca in the US come from Ireland, Wales and Greece after the American Revolution she left Scotland skilled in occult power and came back to the United States where she formed the first coven yeah, that's the Coventry joke that I now understand and that's used by the Queen frequently in her Christmas speech and the Queen is the in the Windsor lineage who are really good in the occult that's a little bit further down deeply, deeply covered up she and her brother were powerful Wiccans and their descendants are the main group of Collinses that practice Wicca and Satanism and if you, I'm a friend of the Wiccans on Facebook like I used to be of Gary Churchill I think I still am but he's taken his picture down since he threatened to have me beheaded <laughs> a wild woman stabbed Sarah Ann Collins to death in a Boston store what you have just received is an important link in tracing the satanic Collins bloodline ok Sarah Ann Collins in her day it seems the name appealed to the Collins family is in turn a descendant of Francis Collins of the 17th century Francis, that's when the pilgrims sailed 17, 1620 Francis, and that's after, just after they had started the massive 30 years Christian versus Christian war in Europe all over Europe huge casual, casualties and the witches are burning everywhere like the Indians Yeah, they're the people that are guilty of scalping fucking people <laughs> Francis was the head of the family when it came over from England the Todd family seems to have satanic undertones to it even in the days just after the Revolutionary War for instance John Jacob Astor married Sarah Todd who had a fair amount of money attached to her the Todd surname and that's the Todd law firms the Sheriff Peter Patterson interlocks with yeah and that interlocks him with Peter Watson yeah Professor Peter Watson who's head of Levy and McRae and that is the Levites that are the high priests of Israel and look after the administrative tents for the Israeli armies in the Old Testament where you're allowed to shave the heads yeah and put people in fire pans which is what happened in Treblinka and it's which is what happened to the innocent women and children in South Africa 
can you feel the love tonight Elton John and all those burials you go to <laughs> the Todd researching the Todd surname is not an extremely common name until one begins researching the conspiracy and then it pops up with frequency it is known that during the time of the Civil War the Collins bloodline went into the surnames of Todd and Putnam oh no isn't that clever <laughs> okay it needs to be brought out here that the Putnam family has also spelled their name Putnam <laughs> did you guess that already yeah that's chariots of fucking fire playing sport for your country on a Sunday yeah and all of the war dead jokes at the London Olympics 2012 Miss Valerie Jane Lees when you were still soaking up my funds at Granton on Spey <laughs> yeah where all of those corrupted leaders of the universities have come from yeah <laughs> Lord Care of Kinlockar and the care name is all through my wife's transcript on both sides of the world <laughs> the Harriman thing still makes me smile <laughs> even when I think of the Melrose School ok <laughs> here we've got the Putnam Monthly oh sorry they just quickly moved that the Putnam Monthly do you realise that that is the man that is my boss the Putnam yep yeah? that is the look-alike for the man that lives next to Totsy Watson right next to where my granny used to live in Inch Road <laughs> yeah and they're next to the Websters and that's the Websters that work on the IT and the BT systems that get closed down yeah and all of it is a massive set of incursions on the world's innocence there are not many of us left but my dad is too besotted with sport to realise that he was picked for this task too ok <laughs> uh, and that is in the joke about Tarzan and watch that movie Greystoke again both generations of the monkeys <laughs> yeah, that's the people that live in the jungle and are able to survive as hunter gatherers yeah, it's all for them a massive joke and it leads took the killing of all of those troops and did you hear the aircraft going over just as I started that's the Raphael joke everything is a belly laugh every one of those secret societies culls returning troops that's Walter Scott Foundation that is the Abbotsford Trust that is Lord Charles Sanderson in the fucking syndicate with the Duchess yeah that with Lady Jane Grosvenor one hopes that her conscience will bring them all to their knees one day but I'm not too <laughs> optimistic about that I will keep trying ok the Putnam Central School educationalists right into Sunderland University and uh, that takes you into the car manufacturing companies and they live they, they are parked up right opposite the Murrays in Roxburgh Street <laughs> Okay, where Alistair Moffat used to run his shop, and there is <laughs> the body double for Alistair Moffat's friend that lives next to Tootsie Watson. Okay, saw him in the supermarket yesterday. They know I'm going to talk about this. I don't understand how they can predict the future, but they know I'm going to come, and they know I'm going to keep going, and I don't know what happens in the end. I'm quite confident that truth will prevail. Okay? University of Sunderland leader David Putnam yeah it's a secret society warmongering club that is involved in the killing of the creation of all of those forts by the Calvary Hill yeah Calvary Cavalry all across America and he thinks it's ever so clever to do that and they interlock with Lord Lou Grade and all of the stuff about the BBC and the ITV and the Palatin yeah that's the London Palladium jokes yeah for the grades the biggest Ponzi schemes I've ever encountered 
in my history as a fraud researcher. Massive, massive, massive empires of fraud. Lord, Greed, yeah, right next to Ipswich, where Stephen Andrew Hancock's, Dr. Stephen Andrew Hancock's OBE, is registered in his business frauds in the asset stripping of dental students all across the country. And he's also in Duns too with the Prime Minister and Gary Churchill's ancient relatives at Blenheim. Okay? There is this exposures that are made on the Putnam dynasty and on the culling of all of those American tribes. Yeah, and are dubbed on evil danger because they are just false news plants like everything else we have in the world. Every one of the news agencies is a lie. <laughs> okay? And there's the Olympics on a Sunday. And the man that is the victim of that, the hero in the film, actually dies in a uniform in China. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and that's the creamy Telford jokes in Paris at the Cologne Stadium. The whole lot of it is a laugh about the elites. And the only people I can find, like the Commons, are my friends for all of my life. Not many of those either. Thank you to the people I talked to yesterday. It was lovely. And they had giddy red trousers as if they were from Chipping Norton. And now that I've got a friend on Fa on Skypey from Chipping Norton, Ch Skypey will no longer allow my friends to ring me or me to ring out or to ring my own children as they get robbed at university by these people. Yeah. And the car is the, I can't remember what the massive car company is in Sunderland, uh, but they, they park up opposite the Murrays in Roxbury Street. Okay? Genealogical book which ties the Putnam family to the Collins family is Putnam, Thomas Russell, published in 1897. The B.Y. is a serpent's book. The early Clinton family of DeWitt Clinton. Yeah, that's the DeWitt joke. To wit, in the King's speech, to let them know that the Windsors are actually Clinton's half brother. To let them know it is us. The w -w 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 Windsor warmongering genocidal lineage. The sun's beginning to creep out. Yeah, <laughs> an Illuminati family. Okay, interestingly, there was a Collins boy born in 1824 who was named after that Satanism. His name was DeWitt Clinton Collins <laughs> to 1909. Okay, another interesting tidbit was that Phelps family of Virginia is related to the Collinses. The Phelps arrived in Massachusetts a prominent family in the warmongering skull and bones who have limitless funding for warmongering and double agents as explained by Greg Hallett killed by the w w Windsor family yeah okay uh, and that's the skull and bones Will William Collins Whitney yeah which is the Prime Minister's constituency of Whitney which is Whitney Houston's murder, which is just a story, yeah? And they're in Skull and Bones since 1863, and they're the Collinses, yeah? That walk down the aisle with their hands crossed and are linked into the Tavistock dynasties <laughs> and the actors that play the Nazis in the Valkyrie film. All about how the world is run by chaos and genocide, okay? William Collins Whitney, 1841 to 1904, and his... Can you see why I've made two videos on this theme? Two sons, and this is not what riled the gods up. <laughs> That's the Watson stories, and Peter Watson, and being the head of Levy and McCray, and being able to remunerate people for false news frauds. Yet yeah, there are the crashing of helicopters through the roof of the pub that Billy Connolly drinks in and Jim Murphy walks past with blood on his collar only three minutes after the helicopter has hit the roof. With all of the news media there, with the cameras trained on Jim Murphy and his collar, 
he's a friend of Israel like every one of the political parties and the sun is now becoming to come out quite prominently okay <laughs> this is the order of the skull and bones this Collins blood of the Whitney's then went into the Harriman family Bill Clinton's mum anyone who has been reading this newsletter this year knows how important the Harrimans are Pam Harriman is the person behind Bill Clinton yeah she's in the office yeah she's appointed as the president she's the mother yeah and Winston Churchill is the father Pama, Pamela Digby Churchill Bill Clinton's parent okay Pamela Beryl Harriman Digby okay was an English-born American socialite who was married and linked to important and powerful men. In later life, she became a political activist for the United States Democrats. Her only child, Winston Churchill, <laughs> isn't it funny, was named after his famous grandfather. And my relatives from Jedburgh came in the penitent way that they do all of the time when I reveal Jedburgh's role in the world and they understand it entirely and the sh jokes about all of the links to Ireland for the submarines that sunk all of the ships all across the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Romantic involvements and affairs. United States Ambassador to France. Okay, I think the next one shows you what Greg Hallett has to say about the woman. Pamela Harriman was Bill Clinton's mother. On YouTube, thousands and thousands of books sold on those themes before HRH the Queen, who's in charge of the NHS sectioning threat, using the Tavistock Institute that Gary Churchill is on, yeah, to section the innocents and to silence them, saw Dr. Finland on his bike on the Kelso Bridge yesterday. The level of the tweed has surprisingly abated since they lost their courage. Yeah, my wife, in six days' time, comes on to continue with the murderous tale about what she, how she wants to profit from my innocent efforts in the house that I gave her when she joined me, <laughs> and she tried to learn, teach me how to find her G spot. <laughs> yeah, and that was before they closed the sex shop in Hemel. <laughs> okay, Hitler was a British agent, Bill Clinton born in Britain. Yeah, all of the stories about all of the bloodlines, Peter Sellers and Lord Mountbatten, and all of the murders that Prince Philip has committed on all of those people that introduced him to HRH. Okay, it is ever so sinister, and the remaking of Dad's army to cover up World War Two again typifies what the whole lot of the sad bastards are about. Profit for themselves, and murderous genocides all around the globe that could be a civilization within a fortnight, were Hannah Rothschild to have a conscience. She now knows who the most influential person in British politics is. Okay? <laughs> and she's looking ever so old in the new videos that she's made in recent weeks. <laughs> okay? That's Greg Hallett. Pamela Harriman was Bill Clinton's mother. So we're on the Collins story and we're in Whitney where the Prime Minister lives and my brother-in-law lives. Yeah, Stephen Andrew Hancock's OBE out of Baker Street with Valerie Jane Lee's nay, nay the donkey, yeah, at Butlins and all of the jokes about Jesus that all of the sad bastards understand. <laughs> this is the Payne family, yeah, Cynthia Payne, the prostitute that covers all of those jokes, okay? Vanderbilt's by intermarriage. The Payne family has been part of the Rockefellers and Standard Oils. It is a small world at the top. William Collins Whitney had a lacklustre career as an inspector of schools, but then beginning in the 1870s he amassed a fortune from who knows where very quickly. William Collins's Whitney was the power behind President Cleveland, who was his puppet 
he also directed a group of powerful important capitalists called the Whitney Group. W.C. Whitney married Flora Payne, their son Harry Payne Whitney married Gertrude Vanderbilt. Have you heard of them, the millionaires? Cornelius Vanderbilt Whitney married Marie Norton, that's the launch of a heavyweight boxer, several of them in American history, who are covers for the presidents too, who later married W. Avril Harriman. Have you heard that name in the Bill Clinton's mum's context? Unit into S&B in 1913. Yeah, it is vicious. The man who helped finance Hitler to power. Yeah, John Cook, Das Boot, all of the bullshit that you've spouted and the whole of your life is about. Yeah, and Caroline Lee's Cook. Yeah, all of the criminal investigations, the issuance of the affidavits that I'm the evil person in this world. And the sun's coming out now. It might even come out in Jedburgh someday. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline Cook, the innocent sister of that man. When Prescott Bush, George Bush's father, lost all his money in the 1929 stock market crash, the Harrimans again came to financially help Prescott Bush back to his feet. Yeah, that's John Prescott in the thingy-be uh, Tony Blair's fish joke. Yeah, and that's the Lib Dem that died because all of them are laughing at false religion in the up Pompeii era. <laughs> uh, it's not John Prescott, it's John Prescott's fish. Yeah, about Tony Blair having a fish, which is the penis in the religious joke, in his office. Yeah, and if anybody gets to talk to Tony Blair, they talk about Tony Blair's fish. And that is the joke about Christianity. And the ass in the Up Pompeii movie is Jesus. <laughs> okay, during the 1920s, the W. Averill Harriman Prescott Bush Fritz Tyson, yeah, that's Mike Tyson, and Friedrich Flick created several in entities to help finance Hitler and to produce the weapons, Hitler would need to fight World War II. One of these companies was the German Steel Trust in Germany called the Verignite Stahlwerk. This company produced 35% of Nazi Germany's explosives, 50.8% of Germany's pig iron. This is why Barbara Bush is the most powerful woman on the globe, according to Ali G, because Saint Barbara is the patron saint of munitions. Do you get it? That is the Nazi musicians, mu munitions. 35% of Nazi Germany's explosives, 50.8% of Germany's piezo pig iron, 38.5% of Nazi Germany's galvanized steel, 36% of Germany's heavy plate, 22.1% of Germany's wire, and many other things essential for Hitler if it had not been Harriman's and Bush's. Yeah, Bill Clinton's mum. <laughs> By Winston Churchill, who is the daughter of Lady Randy Churchill. He, he is the son of Lady Randy. <laughs> and Bush's money helping Mike Tyson, who was Hitler's major backer, Hitler would never have been able to have launched World War II. And the son now, is completely out. Can you see it glinting off the back of the car? <laughs> yeah. Those are the gods that are my friends. Okay. Germany's wire and many other things essential for Hitler. If it had not been Harriman's and Bush's money helping Tyson's, who was Hitler's major backer, Hitler would never have been able to have launched double World War II. I want to get you on to the E.D. Hitler jokes. That is Rothschild Hitler. Yeah? That is Hitler Rothschild and the Ada jokes. Yeah? The E.D. jokes. Addy and the nicknames and the breeding chambers and the people that rear it. People in my region have a conscience about that. They're very close to my family and I lusted after them when I was delivering their milk and their husbands are the most innocent people I know but their children and their grandchildren are in the horsey sector and I've seen the glances now that give the game away 
she's lovely she's one of the most beautiful women in our region <laughs> okay <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> I missed daughters of darkness uh, wh where were we oh here's Mike Tyson have you heard of him in the context that we've just seen about the launching of World War Two, and the profiteering and the munitions and Hitler Rothschild and Ada <laughs> okay Adolf sorry I meant Adolf Tyson even wrote a book in 1930 I paid Hitler now rare telling about how he financed Hitler and the Nazis beginning in October 1923 as I have can you realize now why Greg Halleck got topped as, as I have said numerous times, Hitler was of the Rothschild bloodline. An understanding of the top 13 Illuminati families opens up a whole new understanding of history. In fact, the full extent of the power of the top 13 families is far greater than what I am able to communicate. This is because of their skill at secrecy and silencing people. Yeah, Gary Churchill at Tavistock in the Mind Control Institution. Yet, with all of those innocent victims in every great conflict, many of them now residing in massive mansions like the White House. <laughs> Allow me to explain, it was no accident that Hitler Rothschild's blood was hidden. A common practice among the top 13 families is to have an important child secretly or quietly without fanfare and adopt the child out to another family all over our New Zealand story and our neighbours up that street yeah and all the mass murders are covers for all of that activity all across the world yeah and that takes us into the neighbours his relatives in fucking Hexham the child then takes on another last name which hides the genealogy in the occult ceremonies the biological parents will step forward for instance for mothers of darkness the biological father must impregnate the young daughter who is being initiated into the mothers of darkness. The first baby by the girl must come from her biological father and must be sacrificed by her to Satan. This is the stuff that I do not believe in and I do not believe now that any of the people will have the morals like that because they got educated by me uh, in the same regimes as me and those teachers even though they're the Pearsons are really nice people <laughs> yeah there is no need to keep covering up what happened in Hitler's era we're through that now we've had for the whole of Queen Elizabeth II's reign a world that is largely involved in little skirmishes yeah that persecute the weaker nations on our globe and I will change that if I'm given the capacity to do it okay many of the Illuminati children are adopted out in fact our, Cl our president Clinton was do you get it now <laughs> John Cook do you get it now that's the Cooks that discovered New Zealand and have now sold it to the Windsors but they don't pay much they just coerce their way through the whole of their lives and that is Prince Philip the Greek okay once a branch loses its occult power its blood is nothing this is why even though my wife is a descendant from the holy bloodline and I don't think Valley Jane is that but you never know the 13th family her branch of the family has had nothing to do with the occult for centuries and could never be part of the Illuminati in summary this article has given some critical names in the early genealogy of the satanic branch of the Collins family <laughs> and if I get time at the end I'll play you the St John being burnt at the stake Joan Collins <laughs> and the window cleaners up the ladder and into every port of entry so that it gets a different last name Satanist Bono or this is the Pisa's again this is the lovers of Madonna and the Bono jokes okay the leading Illuminati families farm trads he spells out that farm trads means the very powerful families the Macbeth story <laughs> that have been the actual ones to pass witchcraft down the Macbeth story 
from one generation to the next. Bonowitz's article claims that the only coherent lineage of witchcraft, <laughs> the Macbeth story, was what these powerful families have given us. And that is, uh, that is the uh, Prince Thingiby, yet the mass murderer that is Jack the Ripper. Prince Eddie in Glam's fucking castle for all that time as the Windsors cover him up and the Reuters organisations cover him up. Yeah, and all the stories we get about the rapists in the borders that are related to the 33 million lottery win and my affiliation to the black family who are ever so decent. <laughs> okay, right then. Revisiting the Collins family, Isaac Bonowitz, who sits in the Illuminati's Grand at Druid Council, wrote in Witchcraft, yeah, the publication Witchcraft, a series of articles about the Green Egg in 1976. That's the Green Door jokes. <laughs> yeah, and the Greens that believe that now we should pay a tax for breathing. Some very interesting statements about the top Illuminati families. That's Bill Clinton's foundation who want to tax you for inhaling the oxygen that belongs to the gods. <laughs> Most f members of farm tribes made efforts to conceal their superstitious beliefs and the pagan magical systems. Instead they became involved in Freemasonry and the Rosicrucian movement in the 18th century. That's the Rose song that I'm so fond about before I left New Zealand. Yet when I was in love with Shania Twain and all those Canadians. Yeah. <laughs> And there is the story about dancing around in your wedding on the draft board. And that is the draft board that sends all of the innocents to their deaths in the great conflicts engineered by these families. Okay? In the 18th century, spiritualism and theosophy in the 19th for all these movements were considered more respectable than witchcraft and still allowed the farm trads to produce occult arts so as the years went by, members of the farm trads absorbed more and more from non-pagan magical sources and handed the new information down to each generation, often carelessly letting the descendants think that a Rosicrucian spell or alchemic meditation was a legitimate part of the pagan heritage. Yeah, that is the Harry Potter movies. She's a massive millionaire. <laughs> And if she is actually the body double, I would love her to become my one true love, because physically she's perfect and her dimples are the loveliest I've ever seen in the whole world. So even today we have the farm trad witches who are far closer to being theosophists, and they are sponsored by the Dukes of Northumberland who are Perseus in the Roman court, or spiritualists to being classical or neoclassical witches, Bonowitz. <laughs> Bono married to Madonna and the hand the God joke in the Argentina <laughs> football era. Okay, the Green Egg, 1976. Lord Petrie, not the one of Hibbs linked <laughs> to uh, linked to Longshanks and the Masters of the Horse in Arundel. Yeah, Grand Master in the Masonic Lodges, this one in the British colonies appointed John Collins to be the provincial Grand Master of Quebec, yeah, where Shania lives and uh, Celine lives, Co and that's the French, that is the French uh, 